Hi, this is Greg Driver. In this tutorial I will show you how to emulate rotation of VR controllers solely from Kinect, without additional device, just with your hands. This will let you enjoy some VR games without purchasing PS Moves or Joy-Cons. But if you have already such devices, then please stay because I have important info also for you. VR buttons can be emulated with hands and gestures. For games like Beat Saber or Box VR, that's all you need. If you need more responsive buttons and touchpad to play VR Chat or Space Pirate Trainer, then you may use cheap input devices as VR Gamepad, Xbox controller, and alternatively a mouse. Apart from our topic, in the video there is hint about a new method of head tracking with just RGB camera. And I'm curious if you will find it and tell me what it will be. Let me know in comments. Here is agenda for this tutorial and let's go with it. Okay, so let's start. First thing is to download Kinect SDK. Links are in the description. Then start Steam VR and on driver for VR window send both hands and head tracking to Kinect Skeleton. If you want body tracking, select it as well. No extra configuration is required. And start driver for VR. Before you put headset on, open Kinect device settings and ensure that your body is being tracked. I usually put Kinect about 2 meters high, pointing down about 22 degrees. It will also work if you put it at level of 1 meter pointing slightly up. Before we start calibration, I recommend resetting headset orientation in direction of Kinect. Pimax, Ivory, Riftcut or Trinus each has own method to reset orientation. While in game you can reset orientation using method provided in description and on the card above. Now calibrate headset with Kinect. Open calibration window, then point headset directly to the Kinect and press calibrate. Now wait until it completes. Next we need to calibrate room. Remember to keep headset pointing to Kinect. Don't need to wear it, as device will track your head anyway. Before we go any further, I want to show you one thing. Right now you can put headset, the tracking and gestures basically work, and you're ready to play. I can open system menu, navigate, and start the game and interact. Kinect will detect your hands better once they are a bit away from the body. Also, they should not overlap to Kinect camera. If one hand is not visible, it will not be tracked. Another tip is to avoid wearing clothes that are loose near hands, as Kinect will often fail to detect where exactly their pose is. Also, gesture detection will work much worse. With Kinect tracking, there are three different speed modes. To change it, press settings button next to hand tracking and then from context menu, tracking responsiveness and controller mode and change settings for controller responsiveness. Normal mode is for those games where speed is not key factor in gameplay, but they are more precise. Fast and very fast method will work very well for games like Beat Saber, where movements are fast and long. Let's discuss now how hand tracking works. By default, the tracker is pointing in same direction as your hand to elbow angle, but give you practically 2 degrees of freedom of rotation. This will work well for VRChat because you need interact in game with menus and other objects. Next we have absolute hand position. This gives you rotation relative to the whole body. It works very good for Beat Saber, Box VR or Google Earth. Last method is aiming. Like the name implies, the controller will always aim in whatever direction you are pointing. This will work very well for games like Space Pirate Trainer or Serious Sam VR, where you basically always aim to the enemy. For all those tracking modes, you can also apply controller shift and offset. This setting will adjust angle of controller for specific game, so the in-game object like a gun or shield is pointing in desired direction. In most cases, this will be only pitch value. For Audio Shield, Space Pirate Trainer or VRChat, setting pitch to 80 or 90 degrees 
usually works very well. If you have PS Move or Joy-Con and it drifts too much, you can tell driver for VR to ignore rotation of device and use one that is emulated from Kinect. Change option of a right controller orientation to yes. Right now only input will be used from the device, while orientation will be emulated from Kinect. Some devices have really bad drift and this method may be much more reliable in long term. Ok, now I will talk about input methods. I will describe first VR gamepad and then gestures. VR gamepad and Xbox controller are great option because they are very cheap and there are buttons and joystick that let us effectively emulate input. Xbox controller can be connected by either USB or wireless adapter and VR gamepad is a Bluetooth device and we power it simply via Bluetooth manager. Remember to switch VR gamepad into game mode, which is done usually by pressing add and B button. If you have problems then test it with other software like Antimicro or Xpadder. Because each gamepad may be different, each button and joystick need to be bind individually. Now open Tracker Manager, click toggle device support window and turn on following option. VR gamepad controller, Xbox controller only input. Now a devices will be detected and they will appear on the right window. Select tracker on the left and device on the right and press assign button. This will bring VR gamepad to tracker input configuration. On the left side there are VR buttons, touchpad and actions that you need to bind to VR gamepad. First select action on the left side. On the right side you will see a prompt, press button or move gamepad joystick. After you perform this action few times, driver for VR will complete binding. You can also bind gamepad to rotation in space or headset reset button. The buttons can be assigned arbitrarily to whichever tracker you want. In particular, you can map buttons and joystick from one Xbox controller to two hand trackers. In case of VRChat, don't forget to bind touchpad press button, which is required for rotation and teleportation together with touchpad joystick. Alternatively, you may use one of controller emulation methods for Xbox controller, keyboard or mouse. If you select this method, then button mapping is available under VR configuration button. Remember that you need assign this controller to each tracker. There is link to tutorial on driver for VR window next to each method. So, we finally got to the gestures. The rule number one, gestures work when no device is assigned to VR tracker. This is very logical because in such case we don't need them. Right now there are two gestures, but I work to extend this and there will be separate video. First is the fist or grip gestures. Each hand fist can be mapped to trigger menu or grip button. This will let you control Beat Saber, Audio Shield or Box VR just with hands. Second gesture is to keep both hands above head for a while. That will emulate system button. Please note that on the video Kinect doesn't track hands when they are up, which should be fixed because it will impact gesture detection and eventually gameplay. To emulate input effectively I recommend to keep hand in half open position like this. Then once you grip there is no extra move which is result of hand position change. If you keep hand totally open then you'll notice extra move that is not intended. Using just hands is really practical but you need to practice it for a while. If it doesn't work for you, then use alternative method. I recommend trying it first with headset off while looking at monitor or use temporarily any of input methods and bring desktop to VR overlay. For each gesture you see what elements it contains. It may help you to find potential problem. For example, if you find that it cannot detect hand fist, then try using loose clothes or change height of Kinect device. That's all for this tutorial. In case of problems or a new game, let me know. Thank you for watching.